Uh, so yeah, um, thanks for for inviting me to this conference. Um, I'm here to present uh, some work I did a couple months back called uh, Procedural Terrain Generation with Generative Adversarial Networks, uh, which is an exciting uh, exciting topic in deep learning, uh, adversarial networks, and, and we'll, we'll kind of go into why that is the case. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, in this paper, we're, we're looking at um, using this uh, as a way to increase replayability of video games through uh, sort of random but realistic generation of terrains. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, so procedural terrain generation for video games has been traditionally done with uh, handcrafted algorithms. Uh, they can be very simple, like Perl and Noise, or they could be uh, like very sophisticated, like uh, what you see in software uh, such as L3DT. Um, and, and while some of these algorithms are, are really good, um, they, they generate really convincing terrain, um, they still have to be handcrafted in the first place. And so, you know, the question is, can we sort of learn from, from real-world height map data and, and actually try to, to synthesize uh, new ones, uh, learn how to synthesize them using machine learning? Um, and so basically, we propose a first step in, in learning uh, and generating these height maps, um, basically using deep generative modeling. And we do this using openly available satellite imagery uh, from NASA. Um, and we use two GAN formulations, uh, two GAN ideas that have been published in the literature, uh, DC GAN uh, by Radford et al. and, and Pixelpix by Isla et al. And we put them together to, to generate height maps and their textures. So, so what we do is that from a random noise source, we generate the height map. Uh, and then from that height map, uh, we, we generate the texture map, which would be like the, the satellite image, uh, essentially. Uh, so here you see a, an example of a height map, uh, for, for those that, that aren't familiar with it. It's basically a black and white image uh, where black denotes the, the sort of the lowest height, uh, which is sea level, and, and white denotes the highest elevation. And so if you kind of blend between these two colors and, 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 and do something like this, then, then uh, that, that's a good representation of a terrain. And so if we render this, this height map in 3D, uh, yeah, we get something like this, basically. Um, so you basically, we, we just have a 2D image that we have to synthesize. And then from that, we, we can just kind of convert that to 3D uh, really easy by just mapping uh, each sort of uh, pixel intensity to a particular height. Um, and so, you know, I guess the most prominent example uh, of, of, of we could you know, use height maps or import height maps or export height maps would be, would be Minecraft. Um, Another one would be, uh, say, yeah, Far Cry. Um, you know, basically any sort of open world game, uh, you know, uses this kind of thing. Um, city Skylines, or a recent city building game, and this game you can actually import the height maps. Uh, so what people do is that they they, they go on this website and uh, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, they they can go on, they can select a chunk of the earth, and then export that uh, to a height map format, and then import it in the city skylines, and they can they can build their city around it. So which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so basically, uh, sort of the the part uh, where we sort of directly synthesize height maps from noise. Um, is pretty much a direct application of this thing called DC GAN, uh, Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Networks. Um, and before I go into that, um, I just want to just introduce the, the GAN first and just kind of explain how that works for people who, who, who are not so familiar with it. And so uh, this is it's this idea where basically we, we want to learn a, a sampling machine, essentially. We, we want to have this function where you know we input noise into the function uh, and then what comes out of the function are random samples. So it's kind of like, you know, if, if there's some sort of data distribution that we that we want to, to learn, we can learn that by learning uh, how to sample from it. Um, well, I mean, learning it in an implicit sense anyway. Um, and so basically, uh, I've kind of illustrated here, I'm sampling uh, Z from Q of Z. So Q of Z is, 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 a, uh, is a distribution. Uh, it could be a really simple distribution that we know, like a multivariate Gaussian. And I'm sampling p elements uh, from this distribution, so I have a p long vector that I, that I sample. Um, this is going to be like the, the noise that I'm going to inject uh, as input into the model. And so it goes through a function called g of g of z, and I'm going to output a prediction x uh, x prime. Um, in this case, it's it's kind of outputted a, a digit of a four, uh, and basically. Um, yeah, the question is, I mean, how, how do we get it to, to, to generate the, the digit in the first place if we want to generate digits? And so we have to introduce another network, actually, an adversary, 
um, and that's called the discriminator. And so the discriminator um, will be fed one of two things, right? Either it will be fed uh, the fake digit, which we've just outputted, or it'll be fed a real digit from our um, from our training set. But here I've just said X was drawn from P of X. Um, but you know, I mean, we, we obviously don't have access to P of X because if we could, we could just generate infinite training data. But you know, that's a finite sample in our training set. And so the discriminator has to try to sort of distinguish what's real and what's what's fake. Um, and so basically the generator then has to try to fool the discriminator. Right, and so the generator and the discriminator kind of play this game where, where during training they, they both try to outdo each other. Um, and ideally, um, sort of at the end of training, uh, the generator is going to be really good at, at generating samples uh, that look like they could plausibly come from the real data distribution. And, 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 and if that's true, um, the discriminator is going to have a really hard time. It's not going to know, you know is this sample real or is this fake? Um, and, and that's what we want to do, uh, but for height maps. Uh, I also forgot to mention uh, actually. So yeah, you know, the the original GAN the, uh, in that paper um, they just use uh, MLPs, uh, just feed forward neural networks, and so the DC part of DC GAN is just deep convolutional, right? Um, and and so on this, uh, you use a convolutional, a deconvolutional neural network uh, to, to generate the image. Um, so you know if you look in, in the top right diagram, you know they've uh, sampled sort of a hundred uh, random digits. And if they fed it through a fully connected layer, and, and they've kind of res uh, reshaped it in, into a volume, and it, they've done uh, deconvolutions to, to basically uh, increase the um, the spatial dimensions um, and generate a digit. So I mean that's really all there is to it, right? You you just use a deconvolutional neural network uh, instead of a, a feed forward neural network, and, and that's your DC GAN. Uh, so what's really cool about the GAN is that you can do these semantically interesting transformations. Uh, so, so what do I, uh, what do I mean by that? So, on the left you see uh, a ceiling, uh, and, and I've denoted Z1. So, so you have some Z1 uh, from the prior distribution, and you you feed that uh, to the generator, and you get seven. On the right you have Z2, um, and then when you feed that through the generator, you get nine. And so it turns out if you do like a linear interpolation between Z1 and Z2, like for example, this would be 0.1 times Z1 plus 0.9 times Z2. This would be 0.2 times Z1 plus 0.8 times Z2. If, if you kind of do a linear inter interpolation this way and feed those interpolations to the generator, uh, you get like this blending, uh, which looks like this, right? And so when you, when you do a linear interpolation or, or some sort of interpolation between uh, you know, two of these, these random vectors, you can actually get semantically... Uh, meaningful transformations. Uh, what I mean is, you know, you're actually blending from a seven to a nine, um, and so that's really cool, actually. Um, and, and next up, I want to show a, a more kind of uh, sort of interesting example where we're, we're going to go from from digits to faces, and it turns out it works for faces uh, as well. Uh, so I'm going to show a cool example from the DC GAN paper. Um, you know, in this, uh, if, if you look at the top, there, there have been uh, three randomly generated uh, images of a smiling woman. And, and so each three of these pictures, they, they have a, a, a vector uh, which maps to a picture of a smiling woman. And if you take the, the mean of those uh, three vectors, then you get this, this average uh, Z vector, uh, which is the, the picture of the woman at the bottom. So that's the average uh, smiling woman. Um, and you know, you could do something similar for, uh, say, a neutral looking woman. And so if you take smiling woman minus neutral woman uh, plus neutral man, uh, then, you know, what do you get? Uh, you get a smiling man. Um, and, and so it's interesting, right? Like you, you, you can do, you can also do arithmetic uh, in the space of the prior and, and get like semantically meaningful uh, transformations as well. Uh, and for those that do natural language processing, um, you know, a, a similar thing was, was demonstrated with uh, words to vec, uh, this algorithm which we, we can map uh, words to, to, to vectors, um, and then you can sort of you know, take, uh, do, do arithmetic uh, between these vectors and, and also get words uh, that are meaningful as well. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so our data set comes from a really interesting source, actually. It's the NASA Visible Earth Project. Uh, and from this, we, we found a, a really big height map of the Earth. It's about 21,000 pixels wide. Um, so that's really good. Uh, but we also found a corresponding 
our satellite image. Uh, and so what we did was that we extracted, uh, you know, from a particular region. In our case, we selected desert. We we uh, extracted uh, thousands of uh, five twelve by five twelve patches. Uh, and so we have this big data set consisting of pairs. And so in each pair, there, there is a patch of of of, uh, of that terrain, uh, and its corresponding height map. And so we use that uh, as our training set to, to to generate our terrains. And so um, I, I haven't. Uh, uh, I haven't talked quite yet on, on how we also generate the, the terrain uh, from the height map, but that's also very similar you know, to say how we generate the, the ter uh, height map itself. And so I'm going to explain that in the next slide. Uh, so, yeah, to start off um, from DCGAN, uh, we, we're drawing a, a random sample Z from the prior G of Z, and we construct this uh, this X prime, this generated height map using the generator uh, G of H, where H denotes the height map. Um, and so, you know, during training, uh, that goes through a discriminator, D of H. And so D of H will either take um, the real X or it'll take the generated X, uh, which I've denoted as X bar. Um, and, and so from that, this, this generator G of H has to try to generate a convincing height map that could plausibly uh, uh, come from, from the real data. Uh, and so now we, we want to do a second step, which is generate the texture, uh, the satellite uh, texture from the height map. And so you know, we learn another generator, uh, G of T. So, so Y prime, uh, which is the generated texture, is uh, G of T of X prime. Uh, and again, we introduce another discriminator, D of T. And so D of T uh, is different from the other discriminator in the sense that it actually takes two inputs. And so either it's going to take a, a real X and a real Y, or it's going to take a fake X and a fake Y, the, denoted by X prime and Y prime. And so it has to detect, you know, the, the, this pair, this height map texture pair, is, 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 that, uh, is that real or, or is that generated? Uh, and so once we have that, and by the way, this is called um, uh, this is called picks to picks uh, informally, uh, but the paper is called uh, uh, conditional image to image uh, synthesis. Um, and so from this, we can we can you know take this generated height map, we can take this generated texture and render it in 3D. And so I, I did this rendering uh, in, in Unity, and so that's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, and so if you remember from earlier uh, when we showed those two interpolation examples, uh, one with the digits and one with the faces, uh, we did something similar with the trains. And so what we did was that we, we randomly generated um, like 100 different height maps and uh, did interpolations between each adjacent height map. Uh, and from each interpolation, we generated the resulting uh, satellite image. Uh, and so we're going to show that next. And so what we also did was that we, we took all of these height maps, the, the same height maps, and we rendered them in, in 3D as well. And so if you do uh, that, uh, this is what you get. Uh, to wrap up, uh, I, I think this has the potential for, for, for better gameplay experiences, and by that I mean more replayability, uh, if you're into that. Um, you know, we, we've seen sort of different kinds of, of random content generation. Uh, for example, in RPGs, uh, we've seen a lot of that, and, and in games such as Diablo uh, and Torchlight, they also you know, randomly generate the dungeons and, and kind of uh, randomly place gameplay elements. Uh, but if we could see this, uh, for example, in a first-person shooter game or something, that would be really awesome. Uh, same thing as I think it could be a tool to better aid content producers. Um, I mean, if they want, they can sculpt the terrain from scratch, but if uh, they, they could maybe start off 
uh, from from one that's been randomly generated. Maybe you can kind of fiddle with these knobs and say you want this kind of terrain, uh, and then it generates it, and they can kind of uh, craft it and, and do their thing with it. Uh, future work could entail, for example, predicting a segmentation mask from the terrain, and so you can imagine, you know, what if the network outputted another map, and so maybe this this map would have kind of different colors. And each color corresponds to like this different um, set of objects. So, for example, like maybe it could tell the game engine to put forest here, or to put a village here, or to, or to put this here. Uh, similarly, you can imagine outputting a splat map, right? And 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 that's going to tell the game engine how to blend uh, certain kinds of, of textures. Um, and, and finally, the general idea can can be applied to other video gaming ideas. Um, you know, and another example I, I thought of was actually you know using this to randomly generate faces, uh, and that would be a really cool thing for RPGs as well. Uh, so yeah, thank you for uh, listening to my talk. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, you can easily find our work on archive, which is you know find that link or, or googling a step towards procedural terrain generation with GANs. Um, you know, I'm happy to take any questions uh, through email. Um, there's some code available um, online as well, and so there are links in there too. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and, and I, I really hope uh, that I see more uh, you know, machine learning, deep learning kind of things uh, to, to aid procedural generation in video games, because I, I think um, I, I love big, uh, big replayability, um, and I, I just want to see more of that in the future. So thank you very much.